What's up fellow gamers, Freak here in patch 10.16b exists, which is intentionally a fairly small scope patch. This time it really will be a short rundown, or I'm going to run down a tangent. Of course, you know how long the video is, and I don't. Well, I'm at an information disadvantage, and I'm the one talking. Weird. Either way, we are back from the break. Yes, Riot took a week off last week. Um, LCS team did not, because we had to put on LCS. Ours is going to be later. Doesn't really matter, it's not a part, really a part of the patch rundown. So let's move on to the fact that, hmm, Caitlyn was nerfed for every reason possible. Who could have seen this coming? Also, Evelyn, Hecarim, Lux, Sona, and Yone were all OP in my elo, and then Kiana was OP in elos above mine. To be fair, Kiana wins kind of everywhere, at least with like reasonably skilled players, but uh, her, her ban rate apparently has gotten so high in... Um, ultra high elo that uh, that's happening but some cool buffs um, what's also kind of nice I'm actually a really big fan of this is we got a continuation of three more AD carries getting buffed um, as I said in the last rundown that had I think maybe like 15 or so marks well, not 15 but you know about 10 marksman changes um, I really think that bot lane is so nearly a closed system it I don't think would be hard I really don't think it would be hard to like, have a bot lane-specific, like, oracle lens. Um, if you don't know about, like, the oracle lens, I think I picked the wrong term for that one. Um, basically, like, the reason you see these bars right here is, like, oh, Caitlyn's pick and ban rate in pro is so high, she needs to be nerfed next patch. Caitlyn's pick and ban rate in elite elo, Diamond 2 to Challenger, is so high, she needs to be she needs to be nerfed next patch. Oh, Caitlyn's win rate in plat to Diamond 3 is so high, she's got to be nerfed next patch. Hey, Caitlyn's win rate in iron to gold is so high, she's got to be nerfed next patch. Right? And so these are all essentially flagged quasi-automatically. Um, where it's like, hey, by the way, Sona's doing too well in in, in plat to diamond. Um, someone take a look at this. And then the designer can be like, oh, wait, actually, I think there's a reason we don't need to nerf this. There's there's extenuating circumstances here, um, which can be true. Or it's like, okay, we should nerf Sona. Let's come up with a reason why. Um, that's, that's what I mean by the Oracle lens. Um, I think you could legitimately have an incredibly narrow focus that catches more outliers aimed exactly at bot lane because there's only like 15 champs that are played there anyway. Just my opinion. I'm not sure it would really be good for the game, but as someone who plays bot lane and knows there's only ever 15 champs I can play anyway, that's not really true, but you know, if, if I want to play Marksman down there, um, it's like, well, that 15 becomes four real quick when... Caitlyn and Ash get to sit at 50% win rate for three months, right? It's like, well, they're actually just those two are the best. Um, whereas, I don't know, we're going to... I wanted to not rant too long. Again, I'm happy with this patch. I do think we could see more AD carry changes over the course of time. That said, I love patch changes and I'm a bot laner. I'm greedy like that. Let's move on finally. All right, so Aatrox. Aatrox is getting some fairly simple mid to late game damage output via his ultimate. Um, in general, in general... Changes to an ultimate, excuse me, look bigger on paper than they are actually impactful. Like, when you see this change, you go, oh, cool, Aatrox buffs. I'll play Aatrox. This is a very small buff to Aatrox 10% of the time. And sure, that 10% of the time is when he cares. It's in the team fights. It's when you're really scrapping hard to try to make things happen. Like, it is an important 10% of the time. But, like, imagine a buff this good to Zig's Q. It's up in the team fights, but also in the generic landing phase where you have push priority, right? Like, that's just bigger. That's just better. Um, <clears throat> either way, we have some numbers. So here's um, old and new. Of course, for the first 10 levels of the game, there is no change at all. Before you have the ultimate, there is no change. Once you have rank 1 of the ultimate, there is no change. Like I said, the buff looks bigger on paper than it is in the real world, where for the first 10 levels, there's literally no difference to Aatrox. Um, nothing has changed whatsoever. Um, but then, okay, look, you get 5 and then 10% more attack damage with rank 2 and 3 ultimate available. Certainly, Aatrox likes to build 30% CDR in its core build with Black Cleaver and Death Stance as fast as possible, basically. So, yeah, your ult's up a fair bit. Like, yes, this is impactful. Yes, it's going to give you some more stuff. Um, what's nice is this is a total AD ratio, so this 4 and 8% increased attack damage is going to remain true at all points in time. No matter what you build, it is always going to be that. This is going to feed into your ability damage. This is going to feed into your auto attack damage. Like, this is not irrelevant. It is not nothing. Um, but I'm going to maintain this buff is reasonably small. And that's okay, because Aatrox is reasonably good. Right? Like, Aatrox is fine, as far as I can tell. 
Um, next up is Caitlyn is too good. I really would like to see this in 10.16. I really, really would like to see that. Um, Caitlyn was already pretty good before 10.15. They gave her two solid buffs. Um, I don't think I said she'd be the best AD carry in the game. Uh, but I did say that these were buffs that she didn't need. I remember kind of whining about that during the patch rundown. Um, lo and behold, they were buffs she didn't need. She became the number one AD carry. Um, and so Riot, in their goal of creating diversity, um, quash diversity. And all we saw was Caitlyn Ash, like every lane in pro. Um, also every lane in solo queue. Um, Caitlyn's pick rate is so high that her, like, if you go to something like Lawlytics, and you look at their score for, like, what you should ban in solo queue because of their pick rate and win rate. Caitlyn has, like, three times the you should ban score than second place. It's, like, absurd. Um, because she's very, very popular. Like, people in solo queue didn't need Caitlyn buffs because people were already playing Caitlyn and they were fine with it and she was solid. They buffed Caitlyn to put her in pro play, which I totally get. Like, I totally get it, right? Riot wants to make sure, and I think this is correct, by the way. I, I'm a super fan of this. That Riot wants to make sure that early game you know, vaguely early game strategies are rewarded in pro play. Um, no one wants to watch pro League of Legends, and no one wants to play pro League of Legends, um, when every game is AFK at your turret, farm for 30, and then team fight over Baron. That is abysmal. That is terrible. That sucks. Lane swaps sucked, where no one did anything for the first eight minutes of the game. Um, turbo turtle farm for late with Victor and Anivia sucks as well, and Riot is well within their right, and it's correct to do so, to buff and nerf things that, yeah, negatively impact solo queue to some degree to make sure the games aren't garbage for pro. I'm a fan of that one. I'm biased. I care a lot about pro League of Legends. Um, well within their right, and I think it's the correct choice entirely. Uh, because also keep in mind that, like, pro play trickles down to solo queue anyway. So, like, it will trickle down to Challenger, which will then trickle down to Diamond, which will, like, will every, like, everyone... Or at least a lot of people watch high elo streamers who are diamond plus or you know or master or challenger and it's like well you're like there's a bunch of open mid in north america um when in 20 what 14 worlds watching cloud nine stream in korea um and people realize that oh if you're losing just say open mid and don't play the game anymore because your team voted no on your surrender vote or it's eight minutes in the game we can't surrender yet I can open mid, and lo and behold, North America has open mid now. And they didn't before 2014. But, you know, we saw that on high elo streams in a server we never played on and said, I also want to quit out of games early. Open mid. It's gone away a little bit, but it was hugely rampant end of 2014, early 2015. Um, anyway, good of them. I, I like this logic, by the way. Um, in general, it is... Um, pulling back on the buffs. They keep the 2 AD. They, they put the move speed back to you know, the lowest possible, 325. Um, I'm always a fan of having, um, you know, base stats. I mean, it's weird, because like, I'm, I'm a fan of consistency, right? So it's like, okay, um, I'm a fan of having things like move speed be deflated when possible. I, I think places like move speed and health regen are like really, really invisible stats that I feel like, and this is without any proof at all. So like, I could be talking completely out of my ass. The designers just tend to, like, they like putting power into, like, move speed and base regen and stuff because it's like, ah, my champion feels better. Look at me. It's like, yeah, your champion's cheating. They're just faster than the other champions in their class. Like, of course your champion's cheating. Like, you're just ruining game balance. Um, and I don't think this happens a ton, right? Like, this is me complaining about five move speed on Caitlyn. But, like, Caitlyn has the longest base attack range in the game. Just, like, outright. Like, yeah, sure, level 16 Tristana passes or whatever. She has the longest base attack range in the game. Uh, not not up for debate. She has ways of denying you from moving forward, and she can jump backwards with with 90 caliber net. Um, she also has a 3,000 range ultimate. Caitlyn does not need to move fast to play League of Legends. She she is she needs the least to move fast to play League of Legends. Like like of all champions, Caitlyn needs move speed the absolute least. Um, I can't think of a champ who needs it less than her, at all. Like actually at all. And they gave her five move speed. Why? Like, there, like, I, so, so the why is, is it helps her laning pattern. She can walk into range to poke you, then walk back out. Like, there's gameplay reasons why Caitlyn can be successful with five more move speed. But, like, in my mind, the, like, if, if League is a well-designed game where things are done on purpose, 
you don't give better than expected move speed to the champion who does not need move speed. Like, that is just like, that feels like throwing darts at a dartboard and saying, ah, five move speed is the buff this patch. Like, I, I vehemently hate that this was one of the changes made. Um, because she, she, she does not need it. And there's only like six move speed numbers possible, right? It just increments by five. Okay, it's actually seven. Um, and not counting things like Janna, which I totally also accept and is like totally makes sense. I'm totally down with Janna having like really weird move speed. I think it's actually a great choice. Um, right, like breaking consistency for good reasons, I'm totally about. Um, Janna's a good reason. Um, I, I just, I hate the idea that Caitlyn got five move speed. That's all. Um, I'm glad it's back. I'm glad this is the one that they nerfed. Um, I don't even hate that Caitlyn has above average base attack damage. Um, it like kind of makes sense for the character works. So like that that's fine, right? That that's inflating a stat that at least makes sense to inflate. Um, let's move on and talk about Evelyn getting nerfed pretty heavily. Um, by the way, this puts Caitlyn from not being the best champion in the game anymore to being, um, you know, still very good. Like this will probably not really diminish her pro pick rate. They will probably still maybe they prioritize her below Ash slightly. Like maybe Ash is above her. Either way, we're not. I think we're not going to see 10.16b anyway. We're going to see, I think it's going to be 10.18, maybe 17. I'm not sure for Worlds. Um, it's almost always 10.18. Like 0.18 is almost always the Worlds patch. That just tends to be true, just based on patch timelines. Um, you know, TBD, like we'll see what it actually is, but it tends to be. Um, either way, um, Caitlyn will still be top three in pro play. Um, even though she was not seen at all and she gained a total of two AD as a result of, you know, the last, you know, three patches combined. Sorry about that. Um, she went from basically unplayed. She's going to be top three with the difference being two AD because pro play is finicky like that is what it is. All right, let's move forward. Evelyn, um, definitely was a big winner in the last patch. Um, I underrated somewhat how big this buff would be. Now, I want to be clear. Evelyn is absolutely unplayable in lane. She is not a good top laner, bot laner, AD carry support. She is she is only a jungler. Um, there was the, like, hope that, hey, maybe the, the, the changes, um, you know, hey, maybe, you know, some of the changes um, might make Evelyn, like, an outside laner. She's not viable. Don't play her. Um, it just doesn't work. But I said, okay, look, um, we buffed her with Q cooldown. I actually like the change. I I'm actually a huge fan of the Q change. I think that was actually really smart to do. Um, <clears throat> just, hey, the cooldown's four seconds. It not just refunded on, on, you know, monsters only. It's just four second cooldown. Your Q is up all the time. Super big fan. Great change. Great change. Absolutely, absolutely good stuff. Um, but they said, okay, well, now that she's so much more reliable, you know, if you miss your Q for whatever reason, well, the cooldown's shorter now. Um, in team fights, your Q is up more often. Like, I have had a lot of, like, I've played probably a dozen Evelyn games um, since the patch. Um, and, like, the number of times I, like, go to gank someone, do the combo, I charm them. Okay, the charm broke, they're alive. Ah, my Q is back. Poke, 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 poke. Like, that's a large portion of them. Like, the second Q is a really, really big deal. It is, it is pretty constant that you're going to need this. Um... So the, the, the cooldown change was a very, very big deal. Evelyn gained a lot of power, and she is objectively a very strong jungler now. Um, and so they're nerfing the Q damage by a bit. Now, what's interesting is Q's base damage is very, very flat. Um, like, it doesn't rank up much at all. Now, you still max it first because it's still your primary damage tool. But she really just scales off AP um, and not really scaling... She doesn't really scale much off of levels. Um, I mean, her W doesn't even deal damage to, to champions. Um, so it's like she's she's really, really AP reliant. Um, so much so that, like, Death Cap is probably her correct second item. And every good Evelyn buys Dark Seal on first recall. Like, they just stack AP as much as possible and delay their jungle item because they really, really, really need raw AP or they can't scale. Um, which is totally fine. It makes sense. I mean, you can see it here in the base damages. Well, yep, this is exactly why it happens. Um, and it's a it's a pretty moderately sized nerf. So here you go. Um, now, I want to point out that there's three components to Evelyn Q, okay? There is the first spike you send out, which is like a, a missile. It's just mystic shot. It goes boop, and it deals damage. Um, and that is the dark base damage. Um, it then puts a debuff on the target it hit, which takes about half this value. It's a different number, but it's about half this value. It says the next three times you deal damage to me, increment it by this amount, which is whatever the little dot value is. Um, and then you throw out a bunch of spikes. You throw out three rows of spikes, um, which will then, you know, amplify the, the dot, like the dart amp, as well as the spike damage. So there's actually three damage numbers to a single target, and there is only one damage number to an AoE target. So single target damage goes from here to here. Um, and I want to point out that in general... Abilities that don't, like, abilities tend to triple or more in damage in League of Legends. And even in the old version, it only barely more than doubled. Um, here, it does a bit more than that, but it still doesn't even triple. Um, so, again, even though maxing Q is correct, it is actually the right ability to max because the cooldown's so short, it's, it's all that matters. Um, she actually, 
like all of her damage comes in really, really early on. It's your primary damage tool, you max it first, and the rank up's not even that good. So like you're you're really early level front loaded. Now that said, Evelyn still seems to function as a champion reasonably well. Um, but hey, here you go. Um, obviously a five flat damage nerf, which is actually a twenty flat damage nerf because the first start does five less damage, and then the three spikes afterwards each do five less damage. Um, your single target damage overall is down by 20 flat at all points, which is obviously a bigger nerf in the early game. So her first clear is slower. Um, obviously the other clears are also slower. Your burst damage is also slower, but like it's more meaningful in the first clear. Um, and then you say, okay, what is it to the AOE? Well, I don't have the single target dart. Uh, dart. I don't have the, the damage amp on it either. I'm just AOEing the chickens down. Well, I lose 15 damage. Um, on my AoE combo, which is also still, by the way, very meaningful. In fact, it's a bigger deal to the AoE camps because you're not, you, you don't have the like the debuff, um, the, the three hit debuff uh, carrying your damage anymore. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a pretty big nerf. Now, that said, I'm, I'm a fan of this one. This is something that they can measure, right? Um, they they are reeling back some of the damage they gave in 10.8. So clearly they, and I don't remember what it was in 10.8. I, I just don't remember that that change. I don't remember how much it was. I mean, it was like maybe plus 10 per level or something. I'm not sure, uh, but they're going to reel back some of it. Maybe it was like not scaling by five, right? It was like plus four or something. I don't know. Um, so they're reeling back some of the damage from 10.8, right? Again, I'm a huge fan of the 10.16 cooldown change. Really think that was a good good, good choice. Uh, and, and, you know, they've probably got a measurement of, well, let me just look back at like my old emails or old data, um, hey, how big was the 10.8 patch change? Oh, Evelyn gained 1.2% win rate when she got 10 damage on Q. Oh, okay, well, we can nerf it back by 5 and drop it by 0.6%, right? Like, that's pretty easy to do. Um, so I'm a really big fan of this, right? Anytime that you can um, walk back in, or even part of an individual change, you know you must be constrained between 0 and N, and it's somewhere in the middle there. And that's, I mean, awesome. Because in general, their goal with this kind of stuff, especially for solo queue targeted stuff, is to just have a nominal win rate drop that says, look, if you are OP, you can remain strong. You know, I don't want, you know, uh, like, you don't want to say, hey, we buffed a champion. Ooh, the buffs were too big. Now you're garbage. Because then mains are like, why don't you just do nothing? Like, screw you guys. Um, so it's like, okay, cool. We can walk it back part way. You still get some of the gains you had. That's fine. Let's, you know, let's just walk back something else that we know is the right amount. We know you're going to be above 50% or whatever. Uh, we know mains can be rewarded. Like, that's cool. So I like this a lot. Like, it's a cool change. Um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty meaningful. This is a pretty big damage hit. Like, this is gonna be impactful. Um, but she could stand to lose, like, 2% win rate. It would still be fine. Then I'm gonna guess over 1% here. Um, solid change overall, though. Good good choice. Um, then we get Gragas. So Gragas got three flat armor. Um, in the jungle, he is pretty weak. Although I think there's still some degree people figuring out builds. Cinderhulk versus Runic Echoes, etc. Though I don't think there's, like, a single build that says, ah, this guy is great. Uh, unlike Skarner, where just Cinderhulk Emacs was like, oh, no, this champion's actually great. Um, Gregus top, though, is getting pretty close to decent. Um, just sub 50% win rate um, with the right mastery and right build. Of course, you can get there, but that's every champion in the game can do that. Um, like, mastery being like you're good at the champion, not not a mastery page. Uh, but three armor is, I mean, honestly, impactful for the jungle and for the top lane. Um, this arguably helps tank Gregus more just because he's going to be taking these hits more often. Um, like he's going to care about them a bit more. Um, this, I believe, should still help jungle more than top, even though top lane tends to be pretty physical heavy, and as you can take minion aggro and other things, Gragas tends to, I mean, you're taking a million physical damage, you're jungling. So um, I like that this buff is aimed more towards jungle than top lane. That's cool. Um, it helps him where he needs it the most. This will still help top lane. Top lane Gragas is probably pretty close to 50% win rate, so he becomes a viable tank top laner. Um, here's the Gragas math. Um, as you can see, it's basically 2% more physical durability uh, for getting 3 armor. Uh, scales to a pretty solid almost 100 armor at level 18, which is like reasonably high, um, which is fine. That's, that's you know, within reason for, for tanky melee champion base stats. Um, yeah, I mean, this is cool to see. It's, uh, you know, Riot does a lot of this uh, recently. They just do like some pretty small, like here's 3 armor, here's 5 boost speed, here's 2 AD, here's 5% or 0.5% attack speed per level. Um, and that's fine because it's, it's Riot saying, okay, look, we... Um, you know, we like they've probably sort of like found a like amount of stats that tends to give an amount of win rate, and they're like, yeah, we want to give him one point two percent win rate, and you get 0.4 percent per armor. So here you go. Like, I'm totally cool with that. I think that's actually great. I'm I'm a fan that, and it's probably not like very strictly codified somewhere that like there's a document where you know this much armor is this much win rate. They probably could and maybe should. Um, that's kind of interesting to me that like that's a possibility because it's probably a fairly reliable 
thing to do. Like you could you could have someone take a couple hours and just like go back through patch history and be like, okay, well every time we gave Sejuani ten more health per level, it was this much, and we can compare to other champions that we gave five health per level and they got this much, and that seems totally reasonable, right? Like they probably could do that, and then they would know, oh, if we're targeting one point five percent, we can do two armor and one AD, and that gets you there. Interesting, right? Like I think that could that could be a thing. Wouldn't hate it. Um, the other minor point is um, I still really would like um, consistency in base stats. 38 is not absurd. Um, Nautilus has like high 40s, I think. Um, and Tarek is there as well. And Tom Kench is there. Um, but, you know, I, I would like at least some level of like, I guess bracketing, like maybe 40 should be the max or something. It's not a really big deal. It's just like me trying to like randomly talk about consistency. Um, overall, cool change. Let's move on. Um, another good one, they walk back a lot of the buff of Hecarim. Um, I did not think this was going to be that big. Um, I didn't think it was going to be that massive. 10.16 buffed his E from 2575 to 2500. Um, this is based on time spent, not on rank. Um, it has been walked down to 2585. So it is two-fifths of the buff, right? They, they, they walked back more than half of the buff, which means, okay, if this champion gained like 2.2% win rate... He's only gonna gain one percent. Where he's gonna, you know, he's gonna lose the one point two here, right? And so Hecarim goes from being the best jungler and top laner in the game to being a very strong jungler and top laner. And much like in the previous uh, rundown, Hecarim was already in a pretty good spot, from what I recall, um, and thus didn't really need to buff this big. Um, I am generally, I guess, okay with like fifty and change percent when it champions getting a little bit of win rate. Still feels a little bad when like. A different champion could be buffed by 1% and not one that's already doing well. Like, you know, maybe. Um, but, okay, whatever. Um, good nerf. All I can really say, right? It's like, hey, they, they walked back and over buff. That's a good choice. Um, Hecarim will still be strong. If you want to play Hecarim, you'll be rewarded for it. If you wanted to get free low, it's not Hecarim. It's also not Gragas. Like, it's... I mean, Zack is very good. Like, there's some good tank junglers out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, Skarner is great as well. But if you're looking for, like, a, um, you know, hype beast, I carry the game, win rate jungler, I think Kindred's maybe top tier in that right now. But, yeah, there's there's not, like, a hype beast carry champ. Um, in general, it seems like tanks get to, for solo queue at least, um, get to take the top win rate spots because they're less exciting. People tend to be less frustrated with a tank jungler killing you. Like, when Hecarim just, like, dives into lane and one-shots you, you're like, this game is stupid. When Evelyn just one-shots you from stealth, you're like, this game is stupid. Um, you know, when Graves just gets 700 CS in 12 minutes and just 1v9s the game, you're like, this is stupid. When Zac just, like, blobs around, you're like, ah, oh, it's Zac. Yeah, good job, good gank, Zac. You're kind of annoying, but at least you're not Hecarim. So, like, that's fine. I think this is the right choice. Um... Moving on, Kaisa gets more attack damage growth and E attack speed rank up. So this is actually pretty exciting. Um, yeah, so so Kaisa's getting some better late game. Uh, I mean, they're supposed to be aiming this at, at, at late game Kaisa. Um, technically, 0.3 attack damage per level can um, impact when you know your build lets you Q evolve. Um, here is oh yeah, here's the Hecarim E move speed uh, before and after the change. It's not a very big difference. Um, we had the similar chart from from last time. Yeah, here you go. So here's Kaisa. So Kaisa base AD is on the left. Her E attack speed is on the right. Um, so like, hey, at level 10, you have two more attack damage, which is, yeah, that's the math, basically. Um, can that sometimes affect getting your Q evolve sooner? Absolutely it can. In certain cases with certain builds, yeah. Um, end of the day, just a nice little, little moderate damage increase. I do want to point out, by the way, that this is not... Um, this percentage is somewhat... Uh, inflated from the real game. Um, Kaisa does automatic on hit damage. She also builds Muramana. She also builds Rage Blade, so she has a lot of extra on hit damage. Like, if you're playing Caitlyn or um, Tristana or someone who builds, you know, attack speed crit and then more AD, it's like, yeah, you're building more AD over the top, but you're also, you know, critting your base AD, so, you know, you're still getting, you know, pretty good dividends from what you're, what, what you're buying in. Um, because Kai'Sa doesn't really ever build crit, I mean, she builds a Phantom Dancer sometimes, but that's it, um, and, you know, you're really heavily flooding your base damages with things like Muramana and Rageblade, uh, and then via the passive, um, base AD 
means objectively less on Kai'Sa than on other champions. And that's okay. She has intentionally low base AD because of the passive, and that makes total sense. I get it. it it's like, it, you know, if I'm like running around critiquing design choices when I've never been a game designer in my life, um, you know, there's some hypocrisy here. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, this makes total sense, it, right? This is why it's happening. Totally understandable. Totally agree with it. Um, but hey, it is still, you know, four damage on hit, which is not bad. It technically increases her W damage as a total AD ratio, um, which, you know, is minor, but it's, I think the AD ratio is like like 1.2 or something or 1.5. So, um, you know, it's like five more damage on your W's late game, which is pretty small, but it exists. Um, and then the E rank up is worth more attack speed. And so from level eight onward, which is, you know, when she gets finally like two real attack damage, um, she gets... 5, 10, 15, 20% more attack speed. Um, and so, you know, here's her attacks per second without any items uh, before and after the build uh, or before and after the buffs. You know, yep, pretty solid 10% overall attack speed increase in late game is pretty meaningful. Um, this does not affect her E-Evolve. Um, there's just no, there's no um, interaction here at all. Uh, but yeah, hey, it's, it's, Kaisa does more late game damage. Um, she is one of the um, lower win rate 80 carries. I'm glad to see follow-up changes to push more low win rate 80 carries into 50 and change. Uh, this probably leaves uh, Sivir with the dubious honor of probably being alone down at low win rate. Um, I'm sorry, Sivir. Probably Callista's down there as well because Callista has a bunch of pro focus because of course she does. Um, unlucky, that's life. Um, but cool to see, right? Um, I really like late game um, cool person champions. Um, I have a friend who plays a lot of mid Galio, and Kaisa Galio bombs are really fun to play. So yeah, um, I'll be enjoying some Kaisa next patch. Um, these buffs are pretty meaningful. Um, this probably puts her in a pretty good spot. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. This is, this is a really this is a like this is a really nice set of changes that Kaisa is going to feel a lot. Uh, then we go to um, Lux down the line. There's also Sona changes. Um, Lux Sona has fairly recently taken over a fair bit of solo queue as a really overpowered duo, um, where basically you just change shield each other, you run double guardian, and you're basically unkillable. Um, it's, it's, yeah, pretty, pretty strong. Um, Lux also, even if she's not playing with Sona, um, seems to do pretty well, um, with shield max, um, and just being a shield support. Uh, and it's like a little bit overbearing. Um, Lux has become the, like the second best ban in solo queue in most, in most regions. So, uh, they're nerfing shield max, right? Um, five less shield at rank one, uh, 25 less shield at rank five with a 0 0.05 AP ratio increase. W mana cost now increases with rank, so 1.W is, like, barely weaker and the same cost. Maxing W is a lot weaker and a much higher cost, so they're really trying to push you away from W max. Um, and, hey, there was a bug where you could triple shield W, which is obviously pretty pretty busted. Um, okay, so here is the base shield value and the ability power it takes to equal to make up for the nerf. Uh, as we said, right, it's a 10% nerf at rank 1. It is a much larger nerf at uh, rank 5, 17% versus 10%. Um, also, it only takes 100 AP to equal out rank 1 of the Lux W. So if you're playing mid-Lux and you're maxing W last, um, by the time you're putting your second point in W, um, which would have been here um, at level 14, uh, you would have more than 100 AP, which means that for mid-Lux, who's not putting points in W, this is a buff. For not the very early game, it takes you a little while to get to 100 AP, but once you're at Ludens, um, you have that. Um, so, okay, the first f six levels are annoying, but um, again, mana cost has increased to 14 plus, and by which point your mana costs in your mana pool are fine. Um, yeah, if you're maxing W late, you're you're not going to feel this, and, and again, it takes 100 AP to buff it, which is, yeah, that, that's going to be fine. Uh, but for support lux, you are never making this up. Like, you are never getting these kinds of AP values on support Lux. You are not getting this. You are you are simply objectively nerfed playing WMAX support Lux. Um, is WMAX still worth it? I mean, maybe. It might still be worth it. Um, yeah, your mana cost goes up to 80. Yeah, your shield is 25 worse on each side. Yeah, you can't triple shield. But, like... Still a good ability. And again, she's very, very, very strong. Um... I am not sure what build's going to take over as highest win rate. I'm not sure if Sona Lux is going to stick around to, like, inflate the win rates. My understanding is even outside of Sona Lux, Lux is still very good, um, though that is a, certainly a portion of it. Um, end of the day, I think this is, like, actually a pretty reasonably sized change, and the AP ratio buff, again, lets mid-Lux feel okay about it. Um, alrighty. Let's move forward. So, Kiana. Um, yeah, apparently has been dominating in Elos above mine. Um, high diamond through challenger. 
Uh, so here's a lower bonus attack damage ratio on the W. Here's a lower base damage on the E, which you max second, 0 to 20 damage off. It's just, you know, fairly simple damage nerfs. I mean, W is just simply like IW, then I auto, and I just hit you for 10% bonus attack damage. Um, pretty simple stuff there, right? 20 base damage, I just I E into you when I cast my Q, and it's 20 damage off that one. So, um, oh yeah, here's the mana cost change. As we expected from Lux, yeah, it's 33% higher, max rank, okay, whatever. Uh, so yeah, Kiana E damage, again, doesn't really matter the first few levels. Kiana's bonus attack damage, not very high in the first few levels either. So, um, you know, not a huge deal early game. You know, solid mid to late game damage nerf. Um, at 200 bonus AD and higher, which is not that hard to get to, um, W nerf is bigger than the E nerf. Okay, good to know. Um, also, you're probably going to use multiple Ws in a team fight, so... W nerf is probably always a bigger deal than the E nerf in realistic terms. So, yeah, I mean, a pretty meaningful damage drop, but, I mean, apparently she's doing really, really well. Um, this is a moderately sized nerf. She's probably going to be sub-50 in most elos, but taking over elite, so I understand it. Um, okay, so Sona. And reading the um, comments online, people apparently don't know how to read. The Sona nerfs are minuscule. I mean, they are tiny. These nerfs don't mean almost anything. Okay, first, she loses 0.6 mana and 2.36 health. Um, so, here's the health difference. Wow. Massive. Just absurd how much health she's lost. Incredible. And this is a champion who's always got a point in W, who's always running Guardian, um, who has, you know, in some cases, a Lex next to her for more shielding. Like, it's two and a half health when she actually has, like, 570 base health. Because that's what W and Barrier gives her. Um, which you can be like, well, you can't you can't grade Keystones, like, oh, really? Because when you, when you lower the base health on Ash, she actually loses that much health. Like, she actually has 10% less health or whatever. When you lower this on Sona... In realistic terms, she never has as much base health. Actually, ever. Like, people have compensated the base stat loss with, well, I mean, right, did it on purpose because the W exists. Um, and people have done it by just taking Guardian, which will basically always trigger on time. Um, so her base health is not actually this low. So she's not actually getting that all in. This is just simply someone taking pity on people like me and rounding the stats so they look nicer. So that next time I write them in, I don't have to, you know, hit 0.26 on my numpad. Um, or 3.6 in this case. Um... Like, this does absolutely nothing power level-wise. Okay, so her base stats are no different. Her base damage, her base shielding, and base move speed are also no different. So Sona is not a different champion at all in any way unless you build ability power. And if you build ability power, okay, well, there's a couple different kinds of Sona out there. There's the abusive Sona Lux, which plays, you know, with a fair bit of farm, right? You go double spell thieves, you both take gold income. Um, you both try to get 20 CS a minute, and you build Archangel's Lich Bane on Sona, um, and then a Death Cap. Uh, so you're building a lot of raw AP, because, by the way, if you ever look at Sona's win rate by game time um, in solo queue, it is sub 50% in the first 20 minutes of the game. Like, Sona gets surrendered on. Um, well, Sona teams surrender, because Sona is indeed a weak laner, um, or at least a killable laner, like even though her base health is high with things like Guardian, people still overstep and die, not expect, not respecting the fact that they are a late game champion. And then as time goes on and Sona levels up and gets more base stats, it gets more ranks in her Q and W and groups up because now that she's in team fight, she's buffing her entire team. Um, if she survives to 25 minutes and is team fighting and has an, arc an, an ardent sensor as a support Lux or a support Sona rather, um, now she's overpowered. And she just like rides a 60% win rate for the entirety of late game. Um, Sona is the best late game support in League of Legends, bar none, and statement. Um, that is a fact. That is an absolute fact. That is the that is true for Sona. She is the best late game support in the game. Um, don't int early on and then receive your free win. That is how Sona works. Um, if you can poke and earn gold, great. But like, if you don't int your lane, you win the game. Um, so they are nerfing her late game somewhat, right? Her late game is down with ability power. So, okay. So here is Sona Q with 100 ability power. Um, a, right, so instead of adding 50 damage, it adds 40 damage. Here is Sona Q, if you max Q first. Here is the damage of the Q with 100 AP. Now, by the way, the aura that you give to your teammates, which lets them auto-attack and, and deal bonus damage on auto-attack because they got buffed by your Q, that's not nerfed. The base damage of the Q, you know, all the poke you're doing in lane, 
that's not nerfed by any meaningful level. I mean, you've got what 30 AP at level one, um, with with stat shards. Okay, so this is what three damage. Okay, instead of doing, I don't know, 54, it does 53. Like, do you care? Does this matter? No, it doesn't matter. You're gonna queue auto them anyway. Like the amount of damage you're dealing through power cord and auto attack is is higher. Like, no, this doesn't matter. Um, I mean, I guess yes, the nerf is still like. 3% or something instead of 10%, but like, man, does this nerf not matter? Unless you're doing, you know, farming Sona, which most people aren't doing. For the support Sona players, you're buying Redemption Ardent Sensor, and your AP stops at like 65. The nerf is even smaller than this. Okay, how about the W? The heal ratio went down somewhat. Okay, well, the heal is down by 5 per 100 ability power, which again, if you're playing like supportive support Sona, you're not getting 100 AP, it's less, it's less, it's less than 8%. It's less than 5%. It's not very much. And to be fair, this is why I think actually at the end of the day, I ended up being smart. I was not initially for this. Um, Riot invented a stat called shield and heal power. And it was a stat that supports could buy to only buff support act aspects and not buff the damage. So that AP Sona could be different from Ardent Sensor into Redemption Sona. Um, because... AP Sona uses Q and Lich Bane and Death Cap and tries to kill things, and Shield and Heal Power Sona probably does more W shielding and healing, but doesn't get to do Lich Bane damage. Um, and actually, like, divorcing those stats was actually a really smart choice. That I thought, you could just cover this with AP, what's the problem? Good choice in the other day. Create some build diversity. Good job, Riot. Um, yeah, this, I mean, this exists, right? After 100 ability power, which means you don't get it this early in the game, this only affects farming Sona. Um, and then the E move speed is um, 1% move speed per 100 ability power. Um, when the move speed buff is already 13%, um, this thing right here is the amount of move speed the actual champion has affected by this aura. Um, the difference is very, very small. Um, it, yeah, it's 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 very small. This is, this is not going to be felt. Um, this nerf is tiny. Like, this nerf is actually aimed at Sona Lux. Um... Which is great. Or, like, other abusive things that people don't have fun playing, like Sona Tom Kench. Or Sona Taric, right? This this nerf affects farm Sona. Um, also want to point out, again, the shield is unchanged. The aura on Q is unchanged. The, like, the base values of this move speed are unchanged. Um, this is so small. Um, this, this is so very, very minor. Um, it doesn't affect support Sona, like, almost at all. And there's gonna be some support Sonas who are like, but dude, I buy Dark Seal, and then I build towards Lich Bane as my third item. Not realizing that in back, practically every game they ever play, they have already won the game before Lich Bane because they are Sona at 25 minutes, and you've already been running the game because you're Sona at 25 minutes, and you're level 13. Congratulations, you've won League of Legends. It doesn't matter what you build. Um, so that's part of it. That's all I want to say. Let's move on. Varus gets 1% attack speed growth. Varus definitely is in a pretty um, weak spot. Um, he got nerfed because of lethality build being OP, and then they tried to put some, um, you know, they nerfed lethality, tried to buff on hit Varus a little bit, try to get that back in line. Um, here is the amount of a sort of base attack speed Varus has. Um, I want to point out that this kind of buff um, allows lethality Varus to auto attack reasonably well. Um, it, it just, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, right? Because... Um, so, there's a few conflicting things going on here. Um, if you are Lethality Varus, you aren't building any attack speed. Um, which means any attack speed you can get from base stats is more impactful. You're getting a full 11% more attacks per second in, in the end game. Um, but, and this is actually an important um, caveat, uh, Lethality Varus doesn't really try to auto-attack very much. He's throwing cues from max range, doesn't get himself in danger, and then, okay, if he has to attack Renekton, he will, but like he'd rather press E and run back to max range. Um, but if he has to attack, he will. Um, but his auto attack damage is not that high. Like, he used the Dusk Blade once and then is sitting there, like, not critting, not using Rage Blade, not using W very well. It's just like, well, whatever. Um, so, you know, in this, it kind of says, but look, the buff is biggest with Lethality Varus, who doesn't build attack speed. In practical terms, for On Hit Varus, who is building Rage Blade and Berserker's Greaves and things like that, um, even though he's not getting actually 10% more attacks per second, um, he will actually use the additive attack speed really, really well because he's constantly attacking. Um, and so the DPS, like the auto attack DPS increase is smaller as a percentage, um, 
for on hit Varus, but as an actual DPS increase in raw numbers, it is a bigger increase for um, on hit Varus. Um, and that's kind of the interesting sort of strange part here. Um, th this can, to a certain degree, change Varus' build path. Um, there is a world where he has enough base attack speed uh, through this that his auto attack focused build is no longer Rage Blade, but actually goes into Infinity Edge and such. Um, because it is, at the end of the day, it is just damage per hit times attacks per second. Um, and you just multiply those together. And the more you increase the attacks per second without requiring build investment, the more you want your build investment to be into damage per hit, right? Um, that is just how the math works. So there is a chance we see this build flip a little bit. It is probably not the case. Um, this probably still puts Varus sub 50. Um, he is weak overall. Um, we'll see if they try to look at him as a bigger project some other time down the line. But they're trying to say, okay, Varus, maybe don't sit at, you know, 47% win rate or something. Let's try to get you up a little bit more, which is cool to see. I'm, I'm glad they're doing that. Um, I, I like this. I like this change. I'm glad they're doing it, like, relatively, you know, recently. Um, okay, and then Zaya gets a pretty solid 0.6 attack damage growth. Uh, a little bit earlier on, we saw that Kaisa got 0.3. Zaya gets twice as much. Favoritism, oh my god. Um, Zaya also just a little bit sub-50, although we do see Zaya in pro play some, with a, a bunch of those Rakan buffs with the last couple of patches. We're seeing a bit of Zaya Rakan bot lane. Um, it's a solid duo overall. Um, this is a pretty meaningful buff, though, right? 0.6 attack, uh, 0.6 AD growth is actually pretty solid. You can see her end game attack damage is up 8 to 9%. Um, Zaya's optimal core build because all of her abilities scale off AD and none of them, except the E kind of, scale off attack speed. Um, you do want to do a Caitlyn build where um, you go Infinity Edge and Essence Reaver. Um, she is one of the champions where Upfire Cannon actually can make sense because Q auto E gets you a root from 800 range. Um, I mean, not quite 800, but you know what I mean. Um, like, she's one of the few champions where Repfire Cannon actually makes some degree of sense. Uh, same with Sivir, where, like, getting a Ricochet out is actually pretty valuable, because, like, that auto attack is actually really good, because um, you hit everyone for 300 damage. It's actually a really good auto attack. Um, but I think Repfire Cannon is, in general, overrated. Um, Zaya is one who can use it. I know people buy it second a lot. It's, again, not that good. Um, uh, regardless, though, um, yeah, this is a pretty meaningful buff. Uh, much like we talked about with um, Varus above there, uh, the more raw AD the champion gets, and 120, by the way, is a very high base AD. This is exceptionally high for a marksman. Um, this can push you towards saying, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and buy more attack speed sooner. Like, I'm going to go, i.e. Shiv, you know, or Hurricane second, because um, I, uh, I have enough attack damage with... 200 base AD off Infinity Edge plus base stats. Um, which, okay, that's only at level 18. You're not going to get there yet, but, you know, point, you know, exists. Um, it pushes you slightly towards buying attack speed. Of course, Zaya has an attack speed buff with her W, which is why I select the Devil BF Sword builds. But, yeah, there's, there's something there for that, right? Um, this is still pretty meaningful, um, especially for the Zayas who are building Zeal item second. They're going to feel it more. It is a bigger, you know, damage increase. Um, a lot of her abilities are also total AD ratios. Um, the, uh, Q and E, I believe, are total AD ratios. I believe the R is still bonus AD. I could be wrong, though. Um, but yeah, cool to see that. Uh, let's move on. Yone. Yone, um, as of the last few days, has had an over 50% run rate on the day. Um, like, Yone has very quickly found his cohorts who have been playing him a lot and have put a lot of games in. Um, by comparison, like Yone and Lilia started at pretty similar win rates um, on their release dates. Yone came out, I think, over two weeks later um, and has already passed her in win rate. Like Lilia is still sitting at 45% a full patch later. If you did nothing, you would just see Yone at 51% on the patch. Um, in fact, if you just compare average 1016 to 1016 B win rates, you will see a win rate bump in 1016 because he has already gotten there. Now that might be because Yone um, has a pretty fast mastery growth um, that like the first 15 games gets you most of what you need. Um, and that can be reasonable. Uh, maybe, you know, Lily has a longer growth pattern or maybe she is, 
I mean, I don't think Lily is actually bad, by the way. Like, having played her a fair bit, I think Lily is fine. That's why they're not buffing Lilia, even though she's still at 45. Uh, but Yone is clearly, clearly too strong. By the end of the patch, he was at 51. Like, in the last few days, he's at 51%. Like, this champion is definitely overpowered. Um, so, hey, no longer applies lifesteal on the R. That's nice. Q damage, which you max first, by the way. Down by up to 20 at max rank. Um, yep, that's definitely pretty meaningful. Yes, it applies his total AD. Still, this is going to be felt quite a bit. Um, good nerf to see. This will, you know, drop him by a solid 1.5%, I'm guessing. Um, but I think Yone will keep gaining win rate, and he will probably still end 1016B at about 50%. Um, so we probably see 10.17 nerfs to Yone as well. Um, still a fan of the nerf. Uh, I'm glad they're trying to keep cropping him down so he's at least a little bit sub-50 on the day. Um, and he will be on day one of the patch. Um, but we probably see something in 10.17. I think it's okay. And that's the patch. Um, we can do a quick TLDR because uh, this is fairly easy to do. Um, a lot of really OP champs getting hit. So uh, Aatrox gets a pretty small uh, buff to his R. Um, ult buffs tend to look better on paper than they are in the real world. But a pretty solid damage amp that only comes in level 11 or higher. There is no buff in the first 10 levels. So this is also part of why this buff is not as good as it looks. Because you don't even use it for half the game. Caitlyn loses 5 movement speed, which she should have never gotten in the first place. Um, which... Uh, totals her total 10.15 buffs to 2 AD, and she will remain a pro and solo Q mainstay. Evelyn loses 5 damage on Q, which is ultimately 20 damage per cast um, to her main target, and 15 damage per overall cast to her AoE targets. This is a pretty big nerf to the early game. I trust that Riot knows how big those changes were, um, and thinks that she will still be viable, but the buffs, the nerfs are pretty meaningful. Um, Gragas gets three armor, which is pretty nice. It helps his jungle, helps his top lane. Um, jungle should be helped a bit more than top lane. Top lane Gragas should be pretty solid overall. Hecarim will also remain pretty strong. They walked back 60% of the E buff, um, and he'll remain above 50%. Hecarim will be a strong champion. He'll be worth playing. Next up, Kai'Sa gets 0.3 attack damage growth and 0-20% more attack speed on supercharge. This is quite nice. Kai'Sa should be in a very good spot as a result. Um, this is good stuff. Uh, this can affect when your Q evolve comes online, so that can be nice occasionally in, a, in, a, in like certain game states. Uh, Lux getting hit pretty hard. Uh, 5 to 25 off the shield, a mana cost to rank up on the W, and no more bug where you can triple shield. Um, this is, this by the way, costs 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 ability power to buff the W. Um, this means if you're playing mid Lux with one point in W, it is a buff to mid Lux, except in the first few levels. Um, support Lux is never going to make up for this nerf. Um, she will never get enough ability power to make up for that. She's going to be weak. Uh, or I should say weaker. Is Lux still going to be viable? Absolutely. Kiana gets some bonus damage ratio taken off the W, which she gets about twice per all in. Um, and up to 20 damage off the E, which is a pretty sizable mid to late game damage nerf. Kiana is being picked and banned a lot in super high yellow solo queue, and so down she goes. Sona's nerfs look bigger on paper than they are in the real world. This health change means nothing, this mana change means nothing, and if you're playing support Sona with Redemption Ardent Sensor, you are barely feeling any of these nerfs. Um, if you are playing carry Sona, where you're getting Archangels into Death Cap, you're going to feel this a bit more. It's affecting the heal and the Q spell damage, but not the aura buffs you give to your teammates. Those are untouched. The base values are also untouched. Um, the move speed nerf on AP ratio barely matters. This doesn't matter very much. This doesn't matter very much. Yes, it's a 20% AP ratio nerf. It's not a big deal. Varus gets 1% more attack speed growth. That is a nice to see. He is still going to be weak overall in solo queue, but they're trying to you know get Varus a little bit closer back to normalcy, which I think makes total sense. Zaya gets 0.6 attack damage growth, which would put her in a very good spot. This is, I think, the third straight Zaya buff we've seen. Um, and she should be in a pretty good spot as a result. Um, this will help her kind of crowd in um, and kind of handle, uh, you know, be a solid, like, B-tier marksman pickup where Caitlyn and Ash are probably still S-tier. Uh, but you've got, you know, Ezreal and Lucian and Ezreal, right, or Ezreal, Lucian, and Callista. There we go. Uh, right below that. And you've got a really, I think, a fairly wide net with things like Zaya. Uh, we're going to get played as well. So, um, solid buff. This puts her at a pretty good spot. Um, should be very good for solo queue. Um, overall, cool beans. And then Yone is already overpowered. Um, for the last few days is when it's been above 50%. 
um, and does deserve a 20 damage cut on the Q, which is pretty meaningful overall. This guy gets several Qs off per fight. I mean, a, a full Yone combo, by the way, he has Q max ready. He like, or, or you know, Q3 ready. He knocks you up, autos you, ults you to knock you up again, Qs you again, and autos you, and you're like, oh, I was CC chain for two and a half seconds, and I took two Qs during that because I, I failed to dodge one skill shot. Um, I guess I'm already dead too because everything crit. Um, so it's actually a pretty big deal. Um, I mean, this guy's going to jam two Qs in you per E as well, and this all gets damage jammed, so this is actually a pretty meaningful damage nerf. Um, this is going to be felt. It's meaningful. Um, Yone is still probably going to be OP by the end of the patch, though. People get better at him, so very strong champ. Well, we went 50 minutes on, you know, nine reasonably small changes. Thanks for watching. I appreciate y'all very much. See you next time.